Welcome to this release of Design Fusion's Solid Edge blog. This is part two of a four part series introducing you to the top new enhancements in Solid Edge 2025 mechanical design. In part one of this blog series, we looked at the new enhancements that are highlighted on this slide. So if you missed part one, you may want to view that first. In this blog, you will be introduced to the topics highlighted in green. These topics will be especially interesting to those of you who work in the sheet metal environment. Solid Edge 2025 now supports bend deduction and bend allowance in bend length calculations. New entries have also been added to the File Locations tab in the Solid Edge Options dialog so users can define the location of Ben calculation specific Excel tables, which we will discuss on the next slide. New variables have also been added to the variable table representing these values. This now provides users with three Ben calculation methods in SolidEdge 2025. SolidEdge 2025 delivers two new Excel tables in the Preferences folder. There's the Bend Deduction Table and the Bend Allowance Table. These tables are similar to the existing Gauge Table in format, but will return Bend Deduction and Bend Allowance values. As with the Gauge Table, users can customize these tables. Bend Calculation Methods can be set per feature, much like Neutral Factor in the past which means individual features in a part can now be calculated using the neutral factor, bend deduction, or bend allowance, providing flexibility for your design. This is supported in both the ordered and synchronous paradigm. In the sheet metal environment bend table, a calculation method column has been added where the bend calculation method used for each bend is listed along with its value. Users have the option to add the calculation method column to the draft bend table if so desired. The inquire element command now lists the new bend calculation methods when the bends only option is used. It reports the bend calculation method and its value and if it has been overridden at the feature level. Other properties are also listed, including the Excel table and custom formula information if being used. The Inquire element command also now supports mesh bodies and shows results for vertices, edges, and faces. Let's have a quick look at this in SolidEdge 2025. I'll use this multi-body sheet metal model with different features to demonstrate the new Ben calculation method and enhanced inquiry element capabilities. Let's first open the material table and go to the gauge properties tab. Notice the new Ben calculations options listed. I'll first use the traditional neutral factor of 0.33 for Ben calculations. I'll navigate to the flat pattern using the pathfinder. Here I can see the dimensions in the flat pattern using the current calculation method. Next I'll return to the design body where I want to change the global neutral factor. I'll open the material table dialog from the pathfinder and change the neutral factor to 0.44 in the gauge properties tab and click apply to model. Next I'll open the bend table located in the tools tab. Notice that the Calculation Method column displays both Calculation Method and its value. I can also activate the second design body and look at the Bend table for the lofted transition. If I return to the first design body and access the flat pattern again, I can see that changes made are also reflected in the dimension changes to the flat pattern. Next, I'll return to the main body, 
Click on the multi-edge flange one feature and select the edit definition command from the context toolbar. I will then open the options dialog box and uncheck the use default value option. Notice that I can now change the calculation method to bend deduction for this individual bend. I'll enter in 1.23 millimeters for the value, click OK, and then click Finish. From the Inspect tab, I'll select the Inquire Elements command. I'll select the Bends Only option, and I'll click on the Multi-Edge Flange 1 bend on the model, and I can view all the information about the bend. Next, I will make changes to the Flange 7 feature. In the Flange Operations dialog, I'll change the Bend Calculation method to Bend Allowance and enter in 3.33 millimeters for the Bend value. Again, I'll use the Inquire Element command with the Bends Only option to confirm the bend value for the flange 7 feature. Notice that if I open the bend table, the different values will be displayed under the calculation method column. Now I will change the global bend calculation method to bend deduction and use the Excel Bend Deduction table to retrieve the values for the features that I have not just locally modified. I will use the Stainless Steel Gauge table and set the gauge to 20 gauge. I'll click Apply to Model and then launch the Bend table again. As expected, the new values which are retrieved from the Excel table are reflected in the Bend table. The Inquire Elements will list the correct information for different bends, including the calculation method, its value, the Excel value used, gauge table, and gauge. Solid Edge 2025 adds support for etches on and across bends and curved faces. Currently, this is only available in the ordered paradigm but there are plans to add this to the synchronous paradigm in the future. This has support for cylindrical and conical bend faces. The edge command is automatically placed on all faces touched by the wrapped input geometry and the edge is adjusted correctly on bend regions when the flap pattern is created. The last settings used in the X command will now be remembered for the next command execution. This includes the selection filter and etch option entries. This enhancement has an effect on the save as flat command. The export etch text as a text box option will only honor any etches containing all its text placed on planar faces. Etches whose text lays fully or partially on non-planar faces will be translated as lines, arcs, and curves. Let's have a quick look at this in Solid Edge 2025. Let's first create a simple etch on a planar face. I'll make some changes to the Etch Options dialog. and I'll use the Change Selection filter to select the text only. I'll create the etch and hide the sketch. This is the way we have previously done etching. Next, I'll run the etch command again. First, notice that the options I set in the previous etch command have been remembered. This time, I'll use the Sketch option in the Selection filter and select the sketch. When I complete the etch and hide the sketch, 
you'll notice that the etch is wrapped around the bend. Next, I'll create a flat pattern of this part. Notice that the etch geometry has been adjusted in the flat pattern over the bend. The system does this adjustment automatically to maintain the true look in the model. Next, I will run the save as flat command. I'll open the save as flat options. Notice that the same etch options from previous versions are here. I'll use the default export text as text box option and proceed with saving this as a flat. Notice the warning that appears informing me that text is not supported in bend regions and will be converted to geometry. I'll click OK. If I open the DXF file, I can see that the etch over the bend consists of arcs and lines, whereas the planar etch remained as a text box. Want to learn more? Please sign up to our customer portal at the website listed here, where you have access to knowledge-based articles, tips and tricks, how-to articles, and much more. And watch for part 3 of this blog series. If you need additional support, contact our support team at support at designfusion.com or call us at 1-877-215-1883.